If three wars start at once, the United States will have to decide which allies get defended and which ones don't. Not because America lacks weapons, not because its systems don't work, but because it will literally run out of missiles. This is the part of modern warfare nobody puts in press releases. Missile defense doesn't fail in theory, it fails in inventory. And once interceptor magazines start emptying, deterrence becomes a math problem, not a military one. Tonight, I'm not talking about politics or hypotheticals. I'm going to show you the numbers behind why the United States cannot defend every ally at the same time, and why adversaries are building entire war plans around that constraint. The United States Navy operates approximately 290 battle force ships. 72 are underway as of December 2025. 50 are deployed forward. The remainder support training, maintenance, and transit. Of those deployed vessels, carrier strike groups currently operate in the Western Pacific, Caribbean, and rotationally through the Middle East. That distribution matters because those vessels carry the interceptors defending Allied territory. Aegis-equipped destroyers and cruisers each carry between 90 and 122 vertical launch cells. Not all contain missile defense interceptors. Some carry tomahawks for land attack. Some carry anti-ship missiles. Some carry anti-submarine rockets. But the cells that do contain SM-3 and SM-6 interceptors represent the Navy's contribution to Allied ballistic missile defense. And those cells deplete faster than production replaces them. This is the industrial and logistical reality of modern Allied defense. Interceptor inventories constrain what the United States can defend simultaneously. Not budgets, not political will, mathematics. Modern Allied air and missile defense is structurally dependent on United States interceptor production and forward deployment. Allies own Patriot systems, THAAD batteries, and in some cases, Aegis ashore sites. But owning the platform is not the same as sustaining the magazine. Patriots operate in Germany, Poland, Romania, Netherlands, Spain, Sweden, and Greece. Japan operates multiple Patriot batteries and Aegis-equipped destroyers. South Korea hosts eight United States Patriot batteries at classified locations, plus one THAAD battery. Israel operated Patriots until decommissioning them in mid-2024, replaced by David's sling and arrow systems. The Middle East theater includes Patriots in Kuwait, Qatar, Saudi Arabia, and United Arab Emirates. Guam hosts THAAD. All of these systems fire interceptors manufactured primarily in the United States. PAC-3 MSE comes from Lockheed Martin's Camden, Arkansas facility. SM-3 and SM-6 come from Raytheon facilities. THAAD interceptors come from Lockheed Martin. Allies cannot domestically produce equivalent replacements at scale. Germany is building a facility in Schrobenhausen to produce PAC-2 JAM-T missiles with bulk production beginning after September 2026. But PAC-2 uses proximity-fused explosive warheads, not the hit-to-kill technology in PAC-3 MSE. The capability gap is substantial, and even that limited production addresses only European theater consumption. The difference between owning systems and sustaining interceptor inventories becomes critical in high-intensity conflict. Allies control the radars, launchers, and fire control systems. But when magazines empty, only United States production replenishes them, and current production cannot keep pace with multi-theater wartime consumption. THAAD production faces similar constraints. Each interceptor costs approximately $12.7 million. The 8th THAAD battery delivered its minimum engagement package in June 2025, but studies estimate three to eight years to replenish interceptors consumed during June 2025 operations alone. SM-3 and SM-6 production is limited by seeker manufacturing capacity and specialized component availability. These interceptors cost between two and four million dollars each. Naval vessels carry finite magazine capacity. Once expended, replenishment requires returning to port for reload, time not available during sustained operations. PAC-3 MSE uses a K-band millimeter wave active radar seeker manufactured by Boeing. The seeker is a critical pacing factor for Patriot production globally. Boeing produced over 500 seekers in 2024, targeting 650 to 700 in 2025. Even with a new 40,000 square foot facility dedicated to seeker production, output increases are measured in percentages, not orders of magnitude. The propulsion system, guidance electronics, and hit-to-kill kinetic warhead all require specialized manufacturing that few nations possess. Germany's planned PAC-2 production addresses conventional explosive warheads but does not replicate PAC-3 MSE's advanced kinematics or hit-to-kill technology. SM-3 and SM-6 integrate with Aegis combat systems through proprietary interfaces. These missiles require compatibility with SPY-1 or SPY-6 radars, 
command and control software specific to Aegis architecture, and data link protocols enabling network-centric targeting. Nations without Aegis cannot produce functionally equivalent interceptors because the guidance systems are platform-specific. THAAD interceptors use ANTPY2 radar for targeting. The interceptor itself employs infrared seeker technology and kinetic kill vehicles developed specifically for exoatmospheric intercepts. No allied nation manufactures equivalent systems. This is an industrial constraint, not a capability gap. Allies possess sophisticated defense industries, but interceptor production requires specialized facilities, supply chains spanning hundreds of subcontractors, and years of development validating hit-to-kill technology. Rapidly establishing equivalent production during conflict is not feasible. Europe requires missile defense against Russian Iskander and Kinjal systems. Middle East partners face Iranian ballistic missiles and proxy-launched cruise missiles and drones. The Indo-Pacific confronts Chinese DF-21D, DF-26, and North Korean ballistic missile threats. All three theaters draw from the same United States interceptor stockpiles. When Pac-3 MSE batteries relocated from South Korea to the Middle East in April 2025, Indo-Pacific defense capacity decreased proportionally. When THAAD deployed to Israel consumed 92 interceptors in June 2025, global THAAD inventory declined by nearly 15%. When Aegis destroyers in the Red Sea fired SM series interceptors defending against Houthi attacks, those missiles no longer protected assets in the Western Pacific. Current United States Navy deployments illustrate the constraint. Two carrier strike groups operate in the Western Pacific, USS Abraham Lincoln and USS George Washington. USS Gerald R. Ford operates in the Caribbean supporting counter-drug operations. One independent destroyer operates in the Red Sea. Additional destroyers support ongoing Middle East presence. Each deployment allocates interceptor capacity to that theater. Aegis destroyers carry approximately 16 SM-3 and variable numbers of SM-6, depending on mission load. A destroyer assigned to Middle East operations cannot simultaneously defend Indo-Pacific allies. The interceptors are physically in one location, defending one theater. If China initiated action against Taiwan, while Iranian proxies sustained attacks in the Middle East and Russia escalated in Europe, interceptor allocation becomes a strategic decision with no satisfactory answer. Prioritizing one theater means accepting degraded defense in others, and adversaries understand this constraint. Missile inventory depth affects deterrence credibility. Allies relying on United States missile defense must believe interceptors will be available when needed. If inventories are visibly depleted or allocated elsewhere, deterrence weakens. Adversaries focus on saturation and depletion strategies, specifically because they recognize this vulnerability. Launch enough threats to exhaust interceptor magazines, and subsequent attacks face reduced defensive capability. This tactic appeared in Russian strikes against Ukraine, Iranian attacks against Israel, and Houthi operations in the Red Sea. Offensive weapons scale differently than defensive interceptors. Ballistic missiles and drones cost significantly less than the interceptors used to defeat them. Iran can produce missiles faster than the United States can produce interceptors to counter them. Russia can sustain missile production despite sanctions. China's industrial capacity vastly exceeds peacetime United States interceptor production. The economic asymmetry favors attackers. Forcing defenders to expend million-dollar interceptors against thousand-dollar drones creates unsustainable cost exchange ratios. And when defenders run out of interceptors, the economic advantage becomes irrelevant. Undefended targets get hit regardless of cost considerations. Modern allied defense is constrained by production throughput and interceptor magazines, not platform capability or operational doctrine. The systems work. Patriot, THAAD, Aegis, and SM series interceptors successfully engage threats when employed. The constraint is magazine depth and replenishment rate. The United States operates approximately 290 ships. Allies depend on those ships' interceptor magazines for ballistic missile defense. Production increases are underway. PAC-3 MSE targeting 2,000 annually by 2032, seeker production expanding, supply chains diversifying. But these increases require years to achieve and still trail potential multi-theater wartime consumption. Allies own launchers and radars. The United States provides interceptors. That dependency creates strategic vulnerability when conflicts occur simultaneously across theaters, drawing from the same limited inventory. And adversaries planning operations account for this constraint, timing actions to maximize strain on United States interceptor allocation decisions. This is not speculation about hypothetical future conflicts. This is documented reality from Ukraine, Israel, 
Red Sea, and Middle East operations occurring simultaneously from 2023 through 2025. Multiple theaters, sustained operations, interceptor consumption exceeding production, and recognition that current inventories cannot support high-intensity multi-theater conflict without allocation decisions that leave some allies with reduced defensive capability. The mathematics are unforgiving. Finite interceptors, multiple threatened theaters, production rates measured in hundreds annually, while wartime consumption is measured in hundreds monthly. The United States cannot defend every ally simultaneously at current inventory and production levels. That is not political assessment. That is arithmetic.